Hello, welcome to our channel. Now, in any organization, a lot of data is generated, which are uh, internal to the organization, like, you know, um, the code to the organization, the system, or it can be the data which is generated through the different projects or the activities that the organization is into. Now, for the effective use of this data, uh, there are some typical steps, which are generally when, um, you know, followed in sequence, it helps to convert this data into knowledge, which thereby could be used effectively in future by both the organization and at individual level. So today we would discuss some steps which are involved in conversion of data into knowledge. Before we get into the steps, knowledge management helps us in creating, organizing, and the storing of this data such that it is easily accessible and can be well used by the organization and by individuals. Now, what is the uh, advantage of this? The advantage is that it helps us in sharing our experiences between organizations and individuals. So it helps in taking informed decisions and timely action. And overall, it improves the efficiency. So it improves the efficiency of the individuals and thereby uh, it gives the organization a competitive advantage. Now let's look into the steps which are involved um, in knowledge management. The first step is identification. Now, uh, first thing is we need to identify why we want to do the knowledge management. So the purpose of it. So a lot of data may be available with an individual or uh, with the organization, but not all of it is relevant or valuable for the particular purpose that we would want to do. So we need to identify that what is the purpose of the knowledge management and whether it is aligning with the overall organization's goal and vision. After identification, we move on to the step where we capture whatever we have identified. So in this process, what we do is whatever uh, is available, whatever relevant sources we have identified, we try to gather them and capture them. How do we do that? Now, the, the, the information can be available from in various sources. You know, it can be with the individuals, it can be documents, it can be some databases which are already there. What we try to do is we try to capture them. So how do we do that? We involve different techniques here. So if it is with individuals or groups, we try to have, you know, in, uh, interviews and focus group discussions. We can do some surveys. We can also have uh, if it is with, you know, in the form of documents or databases, we can do some documentation process so that we have all that is relevant to that particular purpose of knowledge management. We have it in one place, basically. So after capture, we move on to the next step, which is organize. Now, organizing that particular information which is there is a very important step in knowledge management. Now, um, Knowledge, so we have all in one place, but the basic um, backbone of knowledge management is that it should be easily accessible and to the right people at the right time. So whatever we have captured, we need to organize this information in a very meaningful and structured way so that it is easily available and easily accessible to the people. So uh, what kind of mechanisms do we involve in it? We can have techniques like, you know, we classify them into different categories. We can also employ some indexing methods or we can have some taggings of the documents, uh, the relevant, uh, you know, the relevant products that we have identified. We have some tagging or indexing process um, assigned to them. So once we are able to organize all the information which is available, we need to store it in a place such that it is um, all things are available in one place. So we need to create a central repository where all the information is available. Now, it can be both, you know, physical or it can be digital platforms. So we can have like uh, document management systems or we can have intranet or wiki, which can be used like, you know, by the community of users. So in this storage form, we are actually converting all the knowledge, be it explicit or be it tacit into explicit knowledge, such that everything is available in a secured, centralized place. Once everything is stored, we move on to the next step and which is retrieval. The basic purpose of storing the data in an organized manner is because so that it can allow 
easy access and easy retrieval of data by the individuals and organizations at whatever time they need. So to make this information easily retrievable, we need to employ some robust uh, search mechanisms, some good indexing, some effective tagging, so that a person who is, uh, you know, accessing that, uh, trying to access that data with some uh, search terms and some, you know, indexing that has already been done, uh, classification that has been already been done, one can easily access it. So once the information is stored and it is like, you know, easily retrievable, and everything is in place, it is the organization who should start uh, facilitating and promoting the culture of sharing this knowledge. And it can be uh, between employees or it can be within teams um, and like, you know, the organization as a whole. So uh, for this, the organization can promote, um, you know, some discussion sessions, some collaborations, some workshops, uh, uh, or uh, some knowledge sharing events. Um, it can also just encourage employees to give in their experiences, share their insights. And, you know, um, this whole culture of sharing of this information, which is there. So the next step, which is the transfer, uh, that can be uh, like, you know, more or less like sharing only. But this is like transferring of the knowledge to the person or the group who actually needs it. So it can be like a good mentoring session or a training session. It can be from the seniors to juniors or an expert individual to the team where uh, good insights and experiences which are very relevant and contextual are being transferred uh, to the individual or the group who are actually in need of it. So basically, uh, First, we put everything which is available in place, and then we are going into the process of expansion and refinement, where we are bringing in the culture of sharing and transfer. But what is all this for? The most important step here is to apply. So once we are having that knowledge with us, it is imperative that we use the knowledge base effectively in our day-to-day -day, uh, you know, day -day performance, day-to-day -day functions that we are into. So this... Uh, knowledge base could be used uh, to improve uh, our personal performances, to make innovations. Uh, the organization can use it for decision making and it can, you know, effective decision making, timely actions or leverage learnings and apply to other relevant contexts. So that is the practical application of this knowledge base so that it is uh, optimally used. So when the things are in place and we have applied it to in our uh, daily activities, that is not the end. What the CAME process also demands is a continuous evaluation. In continuous evaluation, we try to monitor the CAME process and see whether it is actually performing optimally. So we try to see whether you know it is having an impact on the performance. We try to get in feedback from the users, try to know what are the loopholes, where are the gaps. We try to assess and see that you know how it can be improved so the last step is a again a continuous process which goes hand in hand with evaluation so we try and see the knowledge that is available is accurate it is of great quality and also it is relevant so that's the key 10 steps into knowledge management process but before we end there is one more thing so once the organization is creating this knowledge base and you know pulling into all the knowledge resources into one place it must ensure that it is providing uh, some training some support some guidelines to the employees for uh, so that you know they are able to use this knowledge easily and uh, access this knowledge easily and use this effectively thank you so much hope you have liked the video